Hello and welcome to Mastering in Logic's guide to going beyond the Deessa 2. We could call this advanced techniques because really it's an advancement of using the Deessa or looking at how the Deessa can be used over and above just vocal processing. So we're going to look at using the Deessa to DS hi-hats or we could say for the purpose of DSing percussive sounds or percussive instruments for the purpose of sound design using a deesser to create interesting soundscapes with the deesser too we're also going to look at the deesser for the purpose of key tracking as you go up the keyboard sometimes you can end up with too much brightness you may want to eliminate that or gently roll off the top end as you go and the deesser can be a great way of doing that if you want to use it instead of key tracking modes that virtual instruments sometimes have. Some virtual instruments don't have key tracking as part of their makeup, so you could actually use the DSA to create key tracking. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the DSA for the purpose of DSing an entire mix. DSing can actually be very useful. Mastering engineers use DSs all the time to take off the top end of a mix or for its original purpose of taming S's and plosive sounds and things like that that are in the top end. So here's the track with its old school house vibe. Check it out. So before we go any further, I'd be really grateful if you hit the like and subscribe button. You can even click the bell button so you'll never miss a video from me. Enjoy the rest of this tutorial on the Deessa 2. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's start with the hi-hat. And what we have here is a hi-hat sound that is coming from Native Instruments Battery. It's just a basic hi-hat sound. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off all of the plugins. So you can see there's a big difference in terms of how this sounds compared to the process sound. So the first thing that I did was just cut all the low end out of this because I don't need it. Now the next thing I did which is going to cause a problem for me down the line, but will be fixed with the DSA, is you can see that I've gone extreme with the settings between the threshold and the ratio. Now, because of this, the signal will clip and therefore I've placed a limiter on here. So this is what it sounds like with the EQ and the hi-hat and the limiter on. So you can hear now we get a very snappy front end, which is what I wanted. But at the same time, the negative effect of that is when I play this against the hi-hat that is panned slightly to the right, the hi-hat that I'm processing becomes too dominant and I want to soften it down a little bit. Okay, so that sounds good. They do work together, but in the context of the mix, this hi-hat, hi-hat 2, becomes too prominent. So the first thing I did, just to push it back, I used the step effects and actually only used it to add some reverb. Now, if you notice there with the reverb, it even though reverb is supposed to push things back, because the, the initial transient of that hi-hat is very sharp, I need to tame it down and this is where the deesser comes in and I've got it in split mode I'm deessing it really quite hard I'm in relative mode so it's actually looking at the energy of the whole frequency spectrum as opposed to just the incoming detection level so it doesn't matter where I set this I'll always um, or where I set the volume on the channel I'll always get the same amount of gain reduction based on my uh, threshold level here Now you can see that the reduction is huge. I'm really pushing this down. And what I like about this, I've got this set up so it's DSing above 7000 hertz. It's in split mode, but it's really pulling the uh, level down aggressively. 
and that means that I'm going to shave off that that top end and it's not going to push through the mix in quite the way it was before. Let's hear it without and then with the de -esser. So what I did, set the threshold really low so I get a really sharp amount of gain reduction and then I've just used the max reduction to set exactly how much I want. So let's listen to that with all of the drums. Can you see when the de is switched off, the reverb actually comes too far forward? What the de is doing is not just de the actual transient of the hi-hat, it's also de the reverb. And now with the de on, listen to how it pulls just behind the snare. So for me, I get a much better dynamic between all the different elements. So that's one way of using the de to to look at your top end percussion sounds. It could be a hi-hat, it could be a tambourine, it could be any type of sound that has high frequency content. Use your ears as you're listening, especially in the context of the mix. It's always difficult to do it on its own without it, without the other sounds playing. So I'd recommend doing it all together. Okay, so let's move on. And what I wanna show you now is using a de for the purpose of sound design. So what I've got here is I've got Alicia Keys piano. Okay, nothing major, just sounds like a piano playing through the chordal accompaniment. Again, a bit of EQ, knock the bottom end off. I put a dip in here, brightening the, the top end by pulling the lower mids down. And then I've got the de 2 here, but I'm not going to play, I'm not going to switch that on first. I've got some reverb from Chromaverb, just a bloomy sound, but notice how I've taken the lows out and then rolled the highs off. Now the idea here is what I want to do is I want to try and turn the piano into a pad. And also I wanted it to have this pad type piano quality sound that sits behind my stab type instrument. So I wanted something that would sit behind this instrument and this is where the sound design piano part comes in. So let's listen to the next element in the mix. Okay, that works quite nicely. Gives it a nice sort of tremolo feel. Like the hi-hat, the piano, the transient of the piano is too much. And if I play it alongside the uh, chordal stabs, and here's the piano. What happens there is the piano takes over and I don't want the piano to take over, I want the piano to be behind. And the way I'm gonna do that is to use the de And you'll notice that I've got the threshold. I'm not trying to be subtle. I'm not, I'm trying to use the de in the complete opposite way for its original intended purpose. So in this case, I'm trying to make this really, really obvious. So I've set the threshold as low as it will, well, almost as low as it will go. I've got the maximum gain reduction as, as far down as it will go. I've got it in wide mode, so it's going to, you know, basically take down the whole frequency range. And I've also got it in shelf mode. You'll also notice that the frequency is quite low as well. And with the de -esser. So you can see, I now have a very, very different sound. By using the de what the de is doing with its release time, it's coming back up relatively slowly. So I get the, the stab of the chords and then the reverby piano sound is coming back up behind that. So you get more movement. So have a listen again and notice how the de swells the piano sound back up after the chordal pad sound.
Uh, this is what it all sounds like together. sound a space opens up and then when it comes back in again the, that that frequency range is is filled up okay so let's now move on let's look at using the deesser for the purpose of key tracking now i'm going to i've got two i'm going to demonstrate with two instruments here i find this a bit of a pain now where you have this light cpu load mode um, so i've got massive here and also just for fun i've got massive x as well the new massive x now I'm, obviously this is not a tutorial about massive x it just you get a chance to hear how some of the sounds sound the bass for example actually is three bass sounds sounds great rich low end the next bass is the Super 8. Massive X is doing all the low end lifting. The two can sit together quite nicely. And then I also have the Super 8 as well. With more of a sustaining type sound. So let's hear the three together. And again, what you could do is you could bring these in and out as you go through one section to another. Key tracking is some real world instruments have a natural roll off. The higher you go on the instrument, the more there's a natural roll off on the instrument. Synthesizers, by their very nature, often don't have this natural roll off. So you want to try and work it into your instrument. Why would you want to do that? Well, when you get up to the top end, the higher register of the keyboard, you're going to find that some sounds might be become too piercing compared to the way they sound lower down. So what key tracking does is it will roll off that top end as you go up. Of course, you could do it the other way. You could make it brighter as you go up with synthesizers the world's your oyster. Um, so let me show you what I mean here. If I play up the scale, and then I'm gonna put the key tracking all the way to 100. So you can see there that when it's at 100, see how when I have it at zero, that's, that's pulling the frequency down a little bit. That's essentially what key tracking does. Now we're going to do this. Let's first of all do this with Massive. And I want to show you what I've done. And I'm going to show you just on its own first and then in the context of the music. Okay, so you can hear as I get up the top end, there's going to be a natural amount of brightness. Let's do it without the de -esser. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is a short improvisation with the de and without the de -esser. This is with a massive preset. And what I want you to notice is how when I'm playing the top end, you get much more brightness coming off the channel when the de is switched off. So this is without the de first of all. Okay, let's hear it with. Okay, so you get the idea. Let's listen to this now with Massive X. I've got a slightly different sound on this one. 
I've gone for a more agitated, brighter high frequency sound for this one. And I can even change this one with the filter cutoff switch as well. Listen to how the DS just tames the top end. It means when you go up to the top, the frequency range feels like it's staying even, even though you're going higher in the frequency range. It doesn't spike out of the mix. Everything stays nice and even. Okay, so let's hear it without the de first of all. Okay, let's now bring the de up and let's hear it with the de -esser. Now to me, that sounds so much more subtle. It seems to work better. When I play the top end, you see there, I think that sounds much, much better. Okay, so let's move on. Let's look at de the entire mix. And the idea here is that what we're doing is we're trying to tame the, the upper frequencies just enough to smooth off the top end of your mix. Now, of course, you could do this with an EQ. You could do it with a dynamic EQ. You could even do it with Logic's own compressor and use the filter. But I'm going to use the de and I think the de is a really good way of just taking the top end out. Because you're only looking at a certain frequency area, it's easier to dial it in. For example, here, I want to tame the hi-hats further, but also the snare. So have a listen. I'm going to play it first of all with just the snare and the hats and listen to with and without. Okay, now it looks like there's a lot going on here because it's just looking at the energy of these three sounds but when I bring everything else in you'll see it's actually only going to reduce on the hats and the snare. So listen to how the top end now gets a bit smoother. So there you can hear that it's, it's not doing that much. It's just doing enough just to make the top end feel a little bit smoother in the upper frequency range. If you notice here, because I'm in relative mode and it looks at the area that you're wanting to DS in relation to the energy of the entire frequency range, what the DSer is doing here is it looks like it's DSing permanently. Oops. See how this is just sort of permanently stuck down. When I put this out of solo mode and it's looking at the energy of the entire range, then you can see that it only DSs on the snare and hats. So therefore it's much more gentle. In relative mode, it also means it doesn't matter if I turn the mix down I'm still going to get the same amount of gain reduction. Because I'm in relative mode, it doesn't matter where I place the faders. It will always reduce in the same way, as opposed to if I have it set in absolute mode. Whatever I do here, if I readjust the volume of the mix, it's going to adjust here. If I turn everything down, for example, I'm going to get less gain reduction and I'm going to have to pull the threshold down even further because the level has physically dropped. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please do hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate all the support on the channel and you know we're, we're growing and I want to bring you content that, that you like and enjoy. Cheers. Thanks for watching.